It's the JR Sport Brief Show right here with you on CBS Sports Radio. Last night, we had an opportunity to talk about the Tennessee Titans, whether or not they're being disrespected, getting the love that they deserve. Well, right now, I got on the Tennessee Titans legend, a former pro bowler, a former all pro, somebody who tackled every living thing that moved for the Tennessee <laughs> Titans. It's my main man, Keith Buller. Keith, how you doing, boss? Doing great, JR. Good talking to you, man. It's been a minute. All the time. Anytime we could connect is a good time. I mean, we got a lot to talk about. I ain't going to waste your time here on a Thursday night. You think about these Tennessee Titans, straight away question. Do you feel that they've been disrespected? Are they getting the love that they deserve? No, nah, I mean, look, I don't feel like they're being disrespected. But if you look at all the other teams in the AFC, they're the sexier teams to talk about. I mean, look, Cincinnati, who they're playing on Saturday, you got Joe Burrow doing magnificent things with Jamar Chase, who's out of this world. Then you got, obviously, the Kansas City Chiefs, who started off terrible, and for them to be right where everyone expected them to be um, in the beginning of the year, the way they started, you might not have thought so. And then, obviously, Josh Kelly, who's playing out of his mind, I guess the best storyline with the Titans is Derrick Henry coming back. You know what I mean? And um, we don't know how effective he's going to be. But all in all, like, to, to keep it real, the, the the national media is is doing their job, to, to be fair. Oh, I could dig it. No, I mean, I, I got people who call me up and say, oh, man, you, you're not talking about this, and, and Titans are going to win the Super Bowl. And I'm just like, I believe that they're going to beat Cincinnati. But for what you just said, if I have to look at the team, yeah, Derrick Henry's a story. But ultimately, if I got to look at the, the Titans being down by a score or two in the third or fourth quarter, I got confidence in Aaron Rodgers or Mahomes or even a Josh Allen to throw you back into the game. Not so much with Tannehill. Why do you think Tannehill gets the slack that he does? Is it justified? Um, I, I think uh, I don't think that it's justified. Um, I understand it, though. You know, obviously, you know, everyone remembers the Ryan Tannehill from you know, Miami, and they were just mediocre. He came here to be a backup for Marcus Mariota. But ever since then, you know, the Titans have been winning and everything has been going through Derrick Henry. But midseason, when Derrick Henry goes down with that foot injury, Tannehill was forced to step up. He had some bad trash games, you know, during that spread and stint. But with the coaching staff, obviously Mike Vrabel, um, the defense, Ty Bowen got that defense going, um, special teams. So they have collectively been able to win games. I will say, just keep with Tannehill, the last two games of the year, he's been very efficient. No turnovers, seven touchdowns, been efficient on third down. And against the Texans, when the Texans made that comeback, Tannehill went in and answered with the offense, made a big play on third down. He was able to get Julio involved. A.J. Brown involved, Westbrook Aquina involved, um, Deontay Foreman ran for a buck 20-something. So I think that it's not going to be like a Green Bay where Aaron Rodgers, you know, if he has 56 seconds left, that's too much time. The Titans are going to have to do it collectively. And with 56 seconds left, they can get it done. I don't know if it's going to be Tenny Hill orchestrating a six-play drive in 40 seconds, but obviously he's going to be a part of that happening. And me, um, all non-biased, I say it's going to take Ryan Tannehill to make three to five plays with his mind, feet, or arm, however it happens, in order for the Titans to really make some real noise. Because there's going to come down to – Cincinnati or whoever they play, if they get past Cincinnati, stopping the run. And Ryan Tannehill, can you answer the bell? Titans legend Keith Bullock is here with us, the JR Sport Brief Show on CBS Sports Radio. You, you talk about Tannehill. You mentioned some of the other important elements to the team. I want to get to Mike Vrabel. Ultimately, do you see these Tennessee Titans getting past the Cincinnati Bengals this upcoming Saturday? Going to be playing at home. Yeah, I do. Um, and you know what, uh, RJ, like I was um, in 08 was the last time the Titans hosted and I was on that team and everyone had us getting past the Baltimore Ravens. You know what I'm saying? So the only thing that got in our way was ourselves, three turnovers, two inside the five yard line. So, you know, the only thing that's stopping these Titans is themselves. But I tell you what, the team that we played in 08 isn't as stout as this Cincinnati team 
that um that these guys are playing. Um, you you can rattle down the list of offensive weapons that they have. You know, Joe Mixon, the T Higgins. You know, um, Boyd, who's gonna play a big factor, I'm sure. And of course, Jamar Chase and Burrow. So the Titans got to play their game. They definitely have to play their game, and it always comes down to the team that makes the least amount of mistakes. And I think that the Titans are more primed and ready for this opportunity being in the playoffs the last few years with the same coach, pretty much the same nucleus of teams. And I think Cincinnati, look, they got, they got into and won their first playoff game in 31 years. I'm sure that was good enough for them, but uh, the legend of Joe Burrow is growing and we're not trying to let it grow this weekend in Tennessee. That's for sure. I hear that, Keith, man. You have spent the past 20 years of your life in Tennessee. You know, starting off with the Titans, you spent the last year of your career back home with the New York Giants. You see Mike Vrabel, what he's doing right now. You mentioned your time in the playoffs with, with, with Coach Fisher. What do you see Mike Vrabel doing that's so special? I can look at him intentionally receiving penalties to extend the clock. I mean, things like that is real forward thinking. What are you watching when you see him out on the field? By the way, he's also one of your former contemporaries. Yeah, and I think that's huge. You know, he comes from an era of football when, like, real football was still being played. So I think as a coach, he can understand the player now because it was more expected of him as a player. So he knows how much he can lean on his players. Being a former player, he understands that, you know, especially with the lineage he has, Ohio State, Pittsburgh with Tomlin, um, then obviously New England with Belichick, those coaches aren't going to BS you. And players know when coaches are BSing. So him as a coach, he's not a BS guy. He shoots his players forward. And I feel like teams operate the best when the coach is, speaks in black and white language, meaning this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it. And I'm counting on you guys to get it done. You know what I'm saying? And I think that Mike Vrabel has been like that since day one, since he's been here with the Titans, you know, jumping in practice, being a former defensive end, outside linebacker, you know, putting the big man vest on and doing pass rush drills, whatever it is to give these guys the knowledge and give these guys the confidence that he knows what he's talking about as their head coach. I feel that's helped him along the way, especially with new guys coming in like a Bud Dupree, and a Julio Jones who's played a lot of football to buy into what Mike Vrabel is preaching down here in Tennessee. All right, Keith, I got to ask you, when you look at the overall playoff picture, and then for a quick second, I want to talk about the coaching again. Keith Bullock is here with us, CBS Sports Radio, the JR Sport Brief Show. When you look at the big picture, what do you see in a couple of weeks in the Super Bowl? See, man, a big picture, um, I'm just going to play the homer. You know, home field, uh, Tennessee has it all the way through. It'll be a tougher matchup if they get past Cincinnati. But what I do know is they beat both Buffalo and Kansas City at home. And a lot of that had to do with the defensive game plan neutralizing those offenses. You know, um, Derrick Henry wasn't too effective in those games. I think he played um, better in Buffalo against Buffalo than he did against Kansas City. But it really came down to the game plan um, of the defense to stop Josh Allen, to stop Patrick Mahomes in those two games. And look, man, um, your man out there in Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers, is lights out, man. Tommy B, class of 2000, he's my draft class, is amazing. He's still out there doing his thing. I know he makes all the dads at home feel great about themselves. But, um, yeah, I, I like what Aaron Rodgers is doing, man. He's just um, – playing pretty unconscious you know and I think that he and Matt LaFleur are on the same page this year I really believe had they gone for it last year it might have been a different situation but they get to rectify it being on the same page with pretty much the same team playing with more confidence so we so I we, like Titans Green Bay Titans Green Bay Super Bowl Titans Green Bay Super Bowl let's just say for all intent and purposes you're going to roll with the Titans to, to upset the Packers right that's what you're going to say Keith I'm not saying that. I said okay. you asked me who's gonna be in the Super Bowl. Okay. I, I, hey, once it gets there, I'm not. I don't get paid to do this. So once it gets there, I'm gonna just sit back. You know what I mean? Have my little drink with me and enjoy it. That's that's the game. I could dig it. Yeah, me and you have sat down and had a few drinks over the, over the course yeah. of the years. <laughs> Keith Bullock is here with us, the JR Sport Re Show on CBS Sports Radio. This is kind of be my my last question, close to it. 
you mentioned how the NFL was like real football and we see how the changes have gone by. You can't touch the QB. That's a good reason why Tom Brady is still able to play. You can't touch him the way that you used to. What is different about from when you played versus now? And more particularly, you mentioned coaching. We see a lot of, let's, I'm going to say it. We got jackasses who are getting coaching job opportunities. We got people's kids who are getting opportunities to coach. What is the biggest change of the game from when you stopped playing 10 years ago? Well, I mean, the rule changes for sure, how you alluded to the quarterback. And like part of it for me, I understand it. You know, I grew up, you know, I'm a 70s baby, grew up in the 80s, 90s, watching NFL crunch course before games. Like, you know, that's what it was about. You know, I played in the NFL where it was like, you know, they had Bounty Gate and all these different things. And, you know, those weren't the only teams doing it. They just got caught, you know. So um, I think the NFL has done a great job on the safety aspect to kind of uh, take a lot of the head aspect, the head collisions, head-on collisions out of the game. Whereas, you know, growing up, those were the biggest hits. But down the line, they leave and do the most damage to players. So, you know, obviously the lawsuits that the NFL has been coming into, so they're being conscious of, you know, and they should be protecting their commodity, which is the players, you know. Um, sure. So I think that, and, you know, when it comes to uh, the style of play, so it makes these guys that are in the NFL now, the linebackers, the safeties, you'll notice um, how they tackle. And tackling isn't the best in the NFL right now because there's been a transition on how to tackle. You know, what is the correct way? I think there was a great hit against, um, it was the 49ers-Arizona um, game. I, I mean, um, the Rams-Arizona game on the sideline when the defensive back hit A.J. Green and jarred the ball loose. You know, that was a textbook tackle, bang, bang tackle, whereas back in the day, it's going to be shoulder, head, helmet yeah. is flying off. Like, you know, um, so that's where you could see the effects of the rules changing. You have a young guy in there, and um, he just is, you know, playing how the game has changed. When it comes to the coaching, there's always been nepotism. But... When you get guys like Mike Vrabel in there, you know, you see guys like D'Amico Ryan's coaching. You see guys like, you know, Raheem Morris. You see former a lot of former guys in the coaching ranks wanting to get their opportunity to coach former players. You know, I love the NBA, how they do it. Former players get tons of opportunities, whereas here it's closer to the belt. It either comes through the franchise itself or coaching lineage or some type of coaching tree. So, you know, I've kind of been getting a little itch seeing some of my contemporaries out there doing it. So, um, you know, I ain't got time to play no games though. You know, I take my, I take the game very serious. So what I put in, I would expect to get out. So we'll How see. How about that? Keith Bullock, former Titans legend, maybe future coach. I like that. This is the last question, man. Titans legend. When the hell are you getting in that ring of honor, man? When is that happening? Do I have to wave the pom-poms? What's going on? <laughs> you know what? That's a yearly question. And it's, it's one of those things, man. Um, you're a New Yorker. You know how it is. Like, like, when you know it, you know it. You know, it's not one of those things that we go around saying it. You know, for you've known ever since I met you who you were, where you'll be, and where you're still trying to aspire and attain. So, that was my goal as a player, to be one of the best players in Titans history. I get that love around the city, around the community. Miss Amy, the owner, um, Amy Adams Grung, she'll get me up in there. I ain't tripping, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. You know, I'm not, it's, it's, not, it's out of my control, but I appreciate the, the respect, though. No doubt about it. Keith Bullock has joined us here at the JR Sport Brief Show, CBS Sports Radio. Where can people keep up with you on a rest of your journey, whether it's talking to folks like me or whether you end up coaching other linebackers? Where can people keep up, Keith? Oh, man, my social media handles. You can find me on Twitter. I'll be bugging out on there from time to time. It's KBull, B-U-L-L-5-3. Or you can check me out on Instagram. It's my name, Keith Bullock, B-U-L-L-U-C-K-53. And... Yeah, man, you could probably just find out what's going on with me on a daily or during the week on there. All right, Keith's no longer tackling people for a living, which we appreciate. It's the JR Sport Re-Show here on CBS 